Talk to you. Recorded live. Hello, everybody. This is Jörg Lismal again from YouTube channel Juggler 66 on another up, uh, another broadcast on Hour of the Truth. Today we have um, Thursday, the 18th of June, 2015. I've been very busy when you follow my YouTube channel, Juggler66, the last days, uploading uh, a lot of new videos, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and that's not only because I say it's interesting, but uh, when you see that the video uploaded yesterday has already been watched 195 times, um, then that is maybe something I could all advise to go to my channel and have a look at. The video is called Nothing But The Truth, Tom Press on Papal Takeover of America. It's a two-hour documentary where Tom Fress analyzes, together with my brother in Christ, Walt Stickle, who is also here on this call and who I will introduce from, uh, in a moment, together with Michael Adams, made a broadcast, uh, I think it was in November last year, and they analyzed the visit from Pope Benedict XVI in 2008, April 2008, with George W. Bush, and the meaning of that. And because we are faced with the future, this year in September 2015, the current Antichrist, Jorge Mario Borgoglio, will come to the United States of America and speak on behalf of the American people in a joint session of Congress, 23rd or 24th of September of this year. And in the light of that happening, it is surely interesting for a lot of people to understand what was the last papal visit about, what was shown on TV, what was said in the mainstream media, and what was it really about. What are the more hidden points behind this visit there? And I can tell you I've uh, listened to that broadcast many times uh, via MP3, and then I later put it into a video and I uploaded that, and I even watched the video already twice. So. It's really uh, getting deep into by me, by, by me also. So I have been busy uh, doing a little bit of work on my YouTube channel, and for the rest, I'm still having a cold. So forgive me for my voice, or if I suddenly have to cover whatever, <laughs> I'm sorry, but can still happen. But I'm still trying to do my best. And now, Walt, how is it over there in the United States of America? Are you already anticipating the coming of the Antichrist later this year? Welcome to the show, Walt. And thanks, thanks, York. Well, sunny shores. We got sunny skies on the sunny, on the southern part of Oregon here. And you know, I I guess my mind has been anticipating, and within only three months of the tour of uh, the tour of Amer of his America, uh, in the visit of the papacy, I've come across a. Uh, a lot of, I mean, it's the picture is getting so clear of what's going on. I want to, um, if it, if you can do a Google search on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, you know, uh, just that's TTP. Yeah, TTPI. Yeah. It, 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 but uh, TT, uh, TPP, TPP will take you there. But I, this was an article that was just written yesterday. The Trans-Pacific Partnership delayed while Obama and Boehner hunt votes. Ten. Uh, also, I just got an email this morning. There's a record number of Catholics that are running for president uh, this this year. And with all this coming about, it's like this is, I guess, the way I feel. You ask me how I feel and what I've been going through the last couple of weeks, especially the last week. Is, uh, it's like this. It's like yelling fire after the house is already burnt down and it's just smoldering. And uh, where we're at in history, that's where we're at. The house has been burnt down. There's no opposition. Nobody understands and nobody is talking about the, the visit of the Pope here in September and what it really means. <clears throat> and I and another thing that's really been on my heart is you know when I put this book together 
when I published this book, The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy by Ron, Dr. Ronald Cook in 1985 is when he, when he wrote it. You know, I've made many edits, and when you're a one-horse operation, you know, and you're putting something together, every time you print a copy, you find something that needs to be changed. And in doing so, it has left taking my breath away what this little book means. Now, I'm going to compare it to something else here later, but first of all, I want to read a, an email from a couple of listeners. And it's greetings in Jesus, Walt. I received the two books, because I've been sending books. I've sent out, a, you know, probably 10, 12 books. And there's been books by another party, one to Israel, uh, to Canada, and across the United States. So I received the two books yesterday. They, they are put together very well. I'm going to try and start my own press in the near future. I may ask for a couple tips. The material, of course, is very exciting for me as well, and I'm, I've already begun reading the book you and York are reading. Just wanted to say a quick thank you for sending these free of charge. Your effort isn't lost on me. And I'm glad this new information of church history and world history is open up to me as well as prophecy and biblical understanding. The name of the road you live on was lost on me either. Let me read that again. I live on, on a, my address. The road I live on is Seven Devils. So he's commenting. He says, the name of the road you live on wasn't lost on me either. Wow, Seven Devils. How did you end up living on Seven Devils Road? <laughs> Almost like the Seven Hills of Rome. Interesting, Walt. I think you're, you may, you're made to expose the Vatican. All Protestants are made this way for sure. I'm sure glad I can call myself a Protestant and know what it is and what it means now. For now, God bless and protect you, your family and your dog, Sammy. Then I got a, another email uh, from a man. I thought it was really interesting. He says uh, he, he's, he's, he's written a it's a, I'm not going to read this whole email because it's kind of lengthy, but I'm, I want to, you know, kind of see where his 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 mind is, and where his head is. He says, "I have studied this subject for 30 years and have tried to convince people to pay attention for just as long. I am convinced that most people just aren't interested in history, and since they never learned about the Jesuit order, they are totally ignorant about the reality of the New World Order." Still, I don't give up. I have a good Bible-believing Christian friends who have never been, never ever heard of the Jesuits. It seems the only people who have heard of them are those who have heard something about their schools, which are held in high regard despite the fact that the obvious goal is to dub down thinking people and blind them with humanism and philosophy. Well put. He goes, I want to read one more paragraph. He says, one thing I have noticed that in many of my research leads wind up in, in, in SDA sites are in one way or another are promoted by followers of Ellen B. G. White. Well, I am not an Adventist, but I am disappointed that not more non-SDI Bible-believing Christians aren't interested in the history of Protestantism. I am not Reformed. I'm a sovereign grace believer along the lines of the resurgence of biblical teachings that brought about the great Protestant upheaval from the Romish Dark Ages. With all the devisitation wrecked, wrecked by the Jesuit Counter-Reformation, the Protestant churches were in shambles by the turn of the last century. I believe the modern resurgence of the free grace movement began in earnest with the publication of the Sovereign Sovereignty of God by Arthur Pink in the early part of the 20th century. I believe the scriptures clearly indicate 
that God has maintained a remnant church in all ages. And I'm amazed that he has not left me to myself in spite of my sinful nature. And uh, words well spoken. And then, look, York this morning sends me an email. He says it's, it's the latest um, Chris Pinto documentary, and it's called The New Age, The Enemy of Christ Exposed. <clears throat> now, it's two hours and 55 minutes. I, I didn't watch every minute of the first two hours, but I watched the last half. And uh, <clears throat> what is interesting is both... There was he interviews Kent Hovind, David Hunt, uh, Stan. How do you pronounce his name? York Stan. Montif, I think. Montif, yes, and uh, several others. And what's interesting to me, it really kind of, you know, sparked my interest in what what is going on here. The title. Now, understand when I'm talking here, I have great respect for Kent Hovind and Chris Pinto. See, and it's, I have nothing to say what they're saying. It's what they're leaving out. And I've commented this to broadcasts past about futurism. But, you see, the New Age the enemy of Christ exposed leaves the papacy out of it. Now, they didn't leave the papacy completely out of this documentation. They're talking about Helen Pulaski and all these mouse pieces. David Icke, all of these mouthpieces for the, for the New Age. See, the title of this is The New Age, The Enemy of Christ Exposed. It should be The Old Age, The Enemy of Christ Exposed. The Old Age, because Roman Catholicism is nothing but New Age. And uh, what was the name of that um, Frenchman? Taylor uh, de Chardin. Yes, he is known as the he is father known, of the new age. He's known as the father of the new age. And, the Jesuit uh, priest. And, and, and you chime in here now, York, because when I, uh, we, we were talking just before we came on air. Yeah. Now, it's real interesting, the same thing they did with Galileo. They first demonized him, and then they taught what he taught. Now, the same thing they did with this New Age guru. He was a Jesuit, and they demonized him at the start, and now they're uplifting him. Now, this is the point I want to make about this two hours and fifty two hours and fifty five minute documentation by Chris Pinto. I advise you to to go up and watch it. I'm not trying to be anti-Chris Pinto. But understand, when I listen to this, it gives me chills. Because, you see, they come so close. Understand. Understand. The position of a biblical Christian is what the reformers taught. Why did they teach it? Because they read the Bible. And every single one of them, every single one of them, after, and they were all scholarly men. Can I just interrupt you here for a second? Do it. Go ahead. About Taylor de Chardin. I opened this afternoon the Wikipedia page on him, but I opened that in, uh, in, in Dutch. Now I opened the Wikipedia page on Pierre Teller de Chardin in English. 
And I just want to read the second paragraph. Quote, Many of Teilhard's writings were censored by the Catholic Church during his lifetime because of his views on original sin. However, in July 2009, Vatican spokesman Frère Federico Lombardi said, quote, By now, no one would dream of saying that Teilhard is a heterodox author who shouldn't be studied, unquote. And he was praised by Pope Benedict XVI. He was also noted for his contributions to theology in Pope Francis' 2015 encyclical Laudato Si. End of the second paragraph. This, what I just read, is enough stuff for a whole broadcast in itself. Because the 2015 encyclical Laudato Si deals with the climate agenda that the Pope will carry to the United Nations when he speaks in September in 2015, also in front of a UN assembly, and will explain his encyclical Laudato Si. So we all know that evolution is the basis for the theory of climate change. And here comes the Pope getting out encyclical Laudato Si, dealing with global change and global warming, sorry, global change, global warming, which is based on evolution. Something Pierre Teller de Chardin, a Jesuit priest, who lived up to 1955, he was trying, he was one of the persons trying to get the theology of evolutionism in the Roman Catholic Church. And this is not something that happens by accident, because you have to understand that the Roman Catholic Church actually is the Babylonian Church. And they are all Luciferians. They are the embodiment of the Freemasonry, which is a Luciferian religion, according to Albert Pike, who states so in his book, Morals and Dogma. And Albert Pike, as probably you know, was controlled by Jean-Pierre de Smet, a Jesuit priest from Belgium. So everybody knows that Albert Pike was the greatest Freemason at this time, 33rd degree and holder of every lodge in the United States of America, but nobody ever talks about the Jesuit behind him. And there you have this connection between Pierre Teller de Chardin, his teachings in the Roman Catholic Church, who had first been, of course, been rejected, and now, Federico Lombardi says, quote, by now, no one would dream of saying that Teilhard is a heterodox author who shouldn't be studied, end quote. Walt, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Well, it goes back to where I, when I'm there talking about the New Age, the Enemy of the Christ exposed, and see the book. It's, it's to derail our thinking. You've heard me expound on, you know, if, if the word Jesuit is not in your vocabulary, and if you don't know the true meaning of it and where it came from. So that is so why it's so chilling for me when I've been putting this book together, it's the title. If you just if you just go up and look at the title of the book, a picture is worth a thousand words. Because the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy puts it all in one one box. But when you start listening to all of these men that are in this documentation, 
it's what's chilling to me is to see they all not saying it openly, but they're refuting the reformers. And when they refute the reformers, they're literally refuting the Reformation. What built the Reformation was the protest. And what were they protesting? And see, every one of these men interviewed on Chris Pinto's documentary are futurist. Chris Pinto will get so close. Dave Hunt will get so close. Kent Hoven. And the reason why Kent Hoven is locked up is because he's had a voice. If I was talking to Kent Hoven over a cup of tea, I said, Kent, you're not preaching the whole gospel. And you never hear talk about the reformers. But the reason why he was taken off the streets, he was nailing the key to what York just talked about. He was exposing because it's the Roman Catholic Church with their evolution is to take the faith away from the people. Years ago, people sat around on a break after working the fields. They didn't question. They didn't realize they didn't come out of a swamp in a, in a big bang. And the Big Bang Theory was given to us by a Jesuit. Jean-Pierre Lemaitre. That's right. A Belgian, again. <laughs> and you see, see, it's so, the reason why, the reason why Kent Hoven has been taken off the streets is because he, he still doesn't really understand his adversary. Because he's a futurist. In the future, it's coming in the future. This man is coming in the future. They're building a one-world religion. And they'll, they'll, they'll even go as far as talking about the one-world religion, a one-world government. And it's the papacy all along. It, this is so important to understand. This is, it, this is the dividing line. This is how you go about on YouTube and you do your research. And when you understand that they don't know who their adversary is, they're talking about something in the future. It's not a, listen, yes, uh, September is three months away and it's in the future. But the United States has been completely overcome by Roman Catholicism. And because of Vatican II, they were told to go out and occupy political offices. I just got a, an email and watched a little two-minute video from a Catholic news. There's more Catholics running for president than there ever has, has been. It's because people are completely ignorant. Hear, hear, hear this in 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 in, in and nothing against Ken Hoven are these futurists, but they're taking people up to the door. They take them close to the door, but they don't open up and tell them what's going on. You, you can research and research and research. Yes, Helen Pulaski, she's a mouthpiece for the New Age, yes. And Alex, Alex how do you pronounce his name? Uh, Alistair Crowley. Yeah, he, he's also, and he's a Mason, and he's part of it. He's a mouthpiece. But who is he a mouthpiece for? They're all, Lucif they're all Satan worshipers. People have to, and, and one reason why, like Chris Pinto, why he 
is a futurist, if he came out and, 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 and pinned the tail on the donkey, his support would dry up and blow away. You see, you see you, you, I read the email to you at the beginning. I'm not trying to pound my chest because I didn't write this book. The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. I didn't write this book. I, oh, I wrote a little introduction introducing Ronald Cook. But the reason why it grabbed me is because, because of what we're, we're, we're talking 2015. Now, we're not talking about something that's going to... It's here. The takeover of America has happened. The house has been burnt down. And they're rebuilding it completely. And this global warming has been proven to be a fraud. There's going to be a come a time when, I mean, there's been, there's been many scientists that have came forward. I mean, this, and, and what are they doing? They're playing God. And I listened to Chris Pinto on this broadcast today. He even quoted about the man of sin, the son of perdition. But see, when he mentions that, that that's the man of sin and the son of perdition is going to be in the future. No, no, it's happening right now. And Luther, here's what Luther said, quote, if you do not contend with your whole heart against the impious government of the Pope, you cannot be safe. You cannot be safe. Whoever takes delight in the religion and worship of popery will be eternally lost in the world to come. Here's another quote from Luther. If you reject it, meaning popery, you must expect to occur every kind of danger, even to lose your lives. But it is far better to be exposed to such perils in the world than to keep silence. So long as I live, I will denounce to my brother in the sore and the plague of Babylon for fear that many who are with us should fall back like the rest into the bottomless pit. That's what's happening on 2015. That's what's happened in September. We're being completely turned over to the old world order. And one-stop shop for all things pagan is the Roman Catholic Church. The more idolatry you have in a country, the more poverty you'll have. And the more crime. History proves that by just studying South America and Mexico. Isn't India a good example? Yes. Well, yes, except it's not. It's it, it, it's uh, uh, it's not uh, Catholicism. No, but Buddhism is idolatry. As it, is yes, but that's that's true. That absolutely. And, and it's a pagan religion, so they are absolutely the same. You're, on, on you're, the same you're, you're, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for correcting me. That is absolutely. And see, that's why you know, that this book has been chilling to me. It's been chilling to me. I mean, I realized I, last week I brought up Sophie. Give me her last name. Sophie Scholl. You know, and just briefly, for people that didn't watch last brass broadcast, this, this gal, in 1943, she was 21 years old, and she was passing out leaflets, resisting, resisting the, resisting the National Socialist Party and exposing what was going on on the Eastern Front. They arrested her on a Friday. 
and she had a trial on on Monday, and an hour after, an hour after, the, they executed her, her and her brother, and one other one other party, with a guillotine. And you know what was interesting? I did a little research on her executor. The judge that the judge that condemned her. He was in Berlin, and he 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 uh, was killed in a in a bombing raid. But the, the executioner was the third and fourth generation executioner. She was ex- executed in Munich, on the outskirts of Bavaria. Okay. And her executioner, when the Allies took over, they hired him. He was a Catholic. Second and third generation. And he and, and he's and he's and he and, and the Allies hired him for executing some two hundred two hundred over two hundred at the Nuremberg trials. Which was to cover up Rome the Nuremberg trials was to cover up Romans Rome's influence on World War on the World War one and two. Very well stated, Walt. Very well stated. In other words, in other words, and they, they and, and this is another thing that on Chris Pinto's broadcast, it starts off and it shows Hitler, and 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 they blame it on the occult. It was the occult that took over Germany. No, no, it was the Roman Catholic Church, the biggest occult cult in the world, that took over Himmler. Himmler, the SS, the first 40,000 SS troops. Now, I learned this from, from a German. He was 17 years old. In, in the Hitler youth, when I met him, he was 85 years old. And, 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 he, and he, he's, he's, he's the one that told me this. That the first 40,000 of the SS, because the SS built up to over a million at, at the peak, but not at the beginning, they were the bodyguards for Hitler. All 40,000 were Catholics. So, so. That's also because they were initiated in the Tula Society and in other secret societies that Hitler dealt with. And um, you have to understand that all these other societies are just the Protestant arm of the Jesuits. In the end, they're all Jesuit controlled. When you go to Freemasonry, for example, the boss of Freemasonry is the Black Pope. So it all works for the same goal. It doesn't matter if, if Hitler read Alan Blavatsky and took some of her things that she said into his policy, or if he read Roman Catholic Catechism and took something of that. And we all know the statement that Hitler did when he said, "I took, uh, I learned a lot from the um, from the Roman Catholic hierarchy, and I'm going to implement the same hierarchy into my party." And he went on to say that he is going to start. Uh, a new society and in that new society he sees Himmler as his Ignatius of Loyola so when you understand what the Jesuits are they are a military order for the Pope and that exactly was Hitler Hitler was 100% controlled by the Pope and it's a wonderful web that spins through the 30s and 40s when you see that in 1933 the Germans uh, in in the head of uh, von Papen went to Italy, to Rome, to sign a concordat with the Pope at that time. And the one who spoke for the Pope at that time was Cardinal Pacelli. And Cardinal Pacelli became, after Pius XI, Pope Pius XII. That's really interesting history. And Van pa- and, Yeah, and, and, and by the way, uh, also uh, 
Václav Vojtka was also involved in that, and that's why they used him in the 40s as a Cyclone B dealer to implement their strategy later to uh, for the Holocaust, you know. Because like you can see in all German movies and everything, this uh, Cyclone B is used for delousing. And that's what it was used in the concentration camps too. And there's proof for that. There's no proof for gas chambers, but there's proof for that. But I'm not going to go into that, but I'm just going to say that the Wojtka, who later then became, became Pope uh, John Paul II, was also in the 40s already involved in this. And he then later became Pope, like Cardinal Pacelli became Pope Pius XII. Everybody who worked with the Nazis and their agenda at that time was promoted afterwards, became even Pope within the Roman Catholic Church. Now, if we just going to see that, uh, these two incidents of uh, Pacelli and uh, Wojtka. And this is no, no, no coincidence. This is placing people there uh, where, where they want them to be placed, and that's what they do all the time. And Papen, uh, too, he was a knight of Malta. Von Papen was a knight of Malta and uh, probably a Jesuit, yeah. Yes, and he, and he was in control of the central, central party. And when they, when they swung the central party, that, the central party was the Catholic party. Yeah, but did you know that um, from Heinrich Himmler, his father and his brother were Jesuits? Yes, yes. That, but probably a lot of our listeners do not know that Heinrich Himmler wasn't a Jesuit himself. But his father and his brother were Jesuits. It runs in the family, you might say. Yeah, it runs in the family. Yeah. You, you, you know, the thing of it is, now, it's getting back what, what, what I was that saying. That doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. Right. But see, I was commenting on the opening of the New Age, the enemy of Christ exposed in, in, in Chris Pinto's video. When he, see, he's mentioning the, the occult and, and yeah. Adolf Hitler. And none of this, listen, this was all, he, Hitler yeah, the problem was... Is, well, the problem is, Walter, that he just doesn't make the connection that we just did. That well, he doesn't, well, well, make, no, he no, doesn't no. make the connection to the, um, to the Roman Catholic Church via these societies that are always mentioned with Adolf Hitler. He, and he doesn't mention that it's all run by the same. It's all run by the Pope, by the Black Pope, first of all. That's, that's right, because, do you see, you see, if he got, listen, these men, how far are they, can they go in, in, that they can reject history? See, by just me, leaving things out. Just by it's leaving not, things out. It's, it's not, not that what, they're lying, but he's just not making, he's just not connecting the absolutely. dots like we just did in our broadcast here. And that's the difference between us who do not get paid <laughs> and people like this who get worldwide fame and get paid for it and all that stuff. That, that's the difference. We connect the dots. We are not afraid to do that because this is what Jesus leads us to do. Yes. This is why we are doing this. This is why we are doing this whole broadcast. Yes, it, it's... We are here to connect the dots. And th you know, this is, sometimes you get comments on, like you all also said, Walt, um, that somebody takes you for an SDA or says, well, you, you take a lot of documents that you use for your broadcast from SDA sites or from other sites. Yeah, of course I take the information from there. But I do connect the dots between these different pages also and see the background of them. And, you know, sometimes you have really to say, because you do not like the message, don't shoot the messenger. I don't care what agenda the messenger had to give me that fact. But I'm grateful that I have it. Yes. And then I have one source that I can go from. And when I check another source and I see the same mention there, maybe in another, in another way, in another meaning or whatever, then I have my confirmation. That is called research. And that is called what I say on my YouTube channel. Do your own research. And you know, when there are 20 different secret societies who all point in, 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 in one direction, then it's almost stupid not to connect the dots. It's almost a crime. And, and that's what these don't do. They, they always are busy with one secret society or maybe two and connect these two with each other. 
but I never tell you that there is even a hierarchy above that. It's, it's, and that is, yeah, sorry, what, and that is what, what, what bothers us so much. It is not what they say, it is what they don't say. Because if they did that, what we just did here the last 15 minutes on the, on the radio, they would not only lose their support, they would go to jail like Kent Hovind did, for example. Because they have a voice. And Kent Hovind, Kent Hovind they use only as an example, I tell you that. Kent Hovind is not important to them. If they want to shut them up, they can kill them. Don't care. Do you think in America is anybody standing up because a Protestant would be killed? Huh? I don't think so. But they are using him. And they are using this, putting him in jail and him getting information out on there. They are using that. Why? In the meantime, his son has his own ministry. And that's a 501c3. So let the people get the name Hovind and let them then connect to the new Hovind and that one we have in our pocket. Voila. That is how the Roman Catholic Church works. Oh, please, Walt. Well, and that's that, you know that's and not not to be seen. In other words, we're about Chris Pinto or Kent Hovind, but just show it, it shows you that they're not connecting the dots. The dots. The reason, and when I put this book together, understand it's printed right here at my house, and I bind it with Gorilla Glue and put a cover on it. Now, see, I don't have a voice like like Chris Pinto or David Hunt or Kent Hovind. See, but Kent Hovind was stepping on some some uh, sacred ground when he started, you know, when he started talking about evolution because evolution is is the ro- see the thing of it is he's never because. Where did this evolution come into our system? How did it came, come, get into the academic? And then when you go to a college in this country today, they, I have a friend that was blasted for four years. They want to teach evolution as a fact. It started in 1962, as I learned yes. in this documentary today. Yes. 1962 or 1963, when they took the prey out of the schools. A subject that we have been discussing on numerous other times on broadcasts on nothing but the truth. We are talking about the externalization of the hierarchy from Alice Bailey and Ellen Blavatsky and uh, Luce's trust connection to the United Nations and United Nations connections to Knights of Malta, etc., etc. It's all in the archives. You can all listen to that. It's, it's in, in, well, listen, we're getting down to the end of this, when we'll get into the book, and I, I, uh, this book has one of the reasons that, that uh, the more I read in this little book, and plus I have another book that I'm sending, I've been sending two books along one, because you can send the same price, is the papacy is the Antichrist, a demonstration. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, you know when you comprehend what you're really reading, and you and, and and then when you see things come about in 2015, when you see all this, it uh, it's not anymore. I don't. There is no speculation here who's who the Antichrist is. You see, you see, the futurists are still speculating. They haven't come to to grips of who the Antichrist is. I can start reading in the booklet now of the Jesuit, uh, Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, or I can just refer to a little thing that happened yesterday to me, and um, I, I'd like to share that. Sure. Um, yesterday, my, uh, my son came along and uh, gave me a present for my birthday, which I don't care for that this is my birthday, but you know, if, if he has pleasure in visiting me and giving me a present, then who am I to judge, you know? Uh, I, I can't teach him not to do it. Anyway, he came along and he gave me a wonderful present, a new headset uh, that is uh, wire, wireless, a wireless headset from, from Logitech. 
because he said so when you when you do this radio broadcast on the internet more and more he said then you uh, then I thought you would appreciate a headset like that oh. and I said well that's great and that you but any chance listen to any of my broadcasts and um, because you know I've said that also in earlier broadcasts that uh, my son is really not interested in all the things that I'm doing all this research and Christianity and everything you know so I was surprised to learn that uh, he listened to the um, inaugural broadcast uh, of the introduction of the reading of the book of Rulers of Evil. Mm -hmm. And he even enjoyed it. So I said, okay, then I hope you come back and listen to the other parts that I've uploaded. Yeah. And uh, I, I, was, I was really, you know, this headset was a wonderful gift. But the best gift he did when he told me that he listened to my broadcast on Rulers of Evil. But then I was almost crying. Yeah. Not because of the headset, but because of the real gift. Right. Right. It, 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 uh, it uh, hits your heart, I know. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still have tears in my eyes when I think about it right now. Mm, yeah. Okay, I don't want to spoil <laughs> these tears. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll start reading now on page 24 on the book uh, The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. We are on the last paragraph of page 24 of the PDF, which reads as follows. Ed Asner has been blasted by many in the U.S. for his stand against U.S. involvement in El Salvador. Asner, of course, was the popular Hollywood actor in several recent television series. He was hounded into silence by being labeled a communist or leftist, or worse, if that were possible. What was it that brought down the wrath of a large section of the American public upon Ed Asner? Simply because he spoke out on the situation in El Salvador. What is the situation in El Salvador that answer deplores? Is it the conservative Roman Catholic death squads massacring hundreds of civilians under the guise of eliminating leftists? It is amazing the leftists are in the world today. Everyone who opposes Romanism is a leftist, Marxist or communist. The possibility of a protestant Christian opposing Rome is so remote today that apparently it is safe to label everyone who opposes Romanism as a leftist. A few years ago, one conservative West Coast commentator even called Paisley a communist. This little paragraph ends with, and for the people who do not know who is meant by Paisley, this is Ian Paisley. He was an, uh, an Irish man, Protestant, and he was in the EU Parliament in the 80s when Pope John Paul II visited the European Parliament. And when the Pope was going to start his speech, he stood up in the back of the room, held up a banner, and cried in a loud and very understandable voice, even on the videos that were made from that, Antichrist! Antichrist! I pronounce you Antichrist! And then, of course, he was taken away. So that's why he said a few years ago, because this book was written in 1985, and I think that visit was in the beginning of the 80s or in the end of the 70s. It's also possible that it was in the end of the 70s. But uh, if you want to see that, uh, just type in the uh, YouTube search engine above the video, Ian Paisley, Antichrist, and I guess you will get the hit of the video. Uh, there are a few videos out there, and you can watch that. Yeah, Walt, this is the spirit we would be hoping for someone to have when the Pope comes to visit in 2015 in September, right? Like we had some time ago, um, this house stenographer, Diane Reedy, who took a chance to call out on C-SPAN television that uh, United States of America was founded by Freemasons and you cannot serve two masters and God will not be marked. And uh, that was a very interesting thing that I even made a long video on. It's uh, been online for about two years now, I think, about about the time, I don't know how long it is ago. Well, but someone like that, someone like Ian Paisley or someone like her, wouldn't that be interesting to see something in September? Yes, it'll it'll be a 
little controlled atmosphere, I'm sure, and but uh, you won't see any resistance. There's no that, that the reason why they're so bold now. I mean, we have a Jesuit. I can't think of his name, Patrick. I can't think of his last name, but he is a house chaplain. And uh, and, uh, and then we uh, and we have a Jesuit pope. And the speaker of the house is is a Catholic, graduated from a Jesuit university. And the Congress is filled full of Jesuit, Jesuit educated people. Of course, Georgetown is right there. And I uh, just read an article off the news last night or yesterday. It was uh, it was about um, yeah, if you. If you if you need a uh, if you need a good man, hire a Jesuit. And this man uh, that's writing this article in Huntington Post, I mean, he's uh, educated at uh, been to a, a Jesuit high school. He went to Georgetown University, and he's advocating if you need a uh, to replace an important person, you know, uh, you know, with a Jesuit education. You know, in, uh, and I can't quote you the Bible uh, passage, but we've all heard it. Uh, you know, we are living in the, like the days of Noah. Oh, yeah. The people, uh, the, the, you know, so in other words, uh, uh, this, this, in, th this, what's going on here in the next three months is there's going to be some big moves. I mean, in other words, they're pushing for, for their, their, they're using the, in, the environment and global warming and the Pope's encyclical on climate change? And don't you think that this global warming, who started that? Who's been keeping that going? You know, and uh, so anyway, uh, no, no, I, I, I would uh, hope there would be a Paisley. And, and if I was in, if I had a chance to be in the, in the, in the chamber there when he pulled come in, I, I mean, they're going to they're gonna do the same thing. They would do the same thing they did to Diane. Yeah, they of course. Would, they would, uh, you know, they send her to for for mental help. See, I mean, in other words, uh, the laws are on the books already that, uh, you know, uh, that they all they have to do is uh, declare you insane and and they and they whisk you away, you know. But but I, I'll say this before you go on here: Do you do you really think the the reformers, Luther and Calvin, Knox, Kramer? Do you think they were insane? No. no, but they saw insanity when they looked back. Yes, they seen the insanity. They looked at back and they seen the insanity and they seen what what Rome had done in her history. They looked into the eyes of the dragon. Yes. And they yes. got awoken. Yes, and and now we've had 500 years and look, look at the look at the track look what happened the the first 30 year i didn't know anything about the 30 year war in the six, early 1600s in germany i mean they almost destroyed germany 12 million people vanished yes and, you know it, it because of, because of the horror and now and now, now you know and that was a war mostly against farmers, like a lot of wars in the Middle Ages were against farmers. And why was that against farmers? Because farmers were often in the position even to read, which was not taught in the Dark Ages. That's why it's called the Dark Ages. Right. But because they couldn't read, they were giving their stories from generation to generation. And they lived kind of uh, apart from the cities, if you know what I mean, really in the country. So the truths survived in those family teachings. It was the only way for the truths to survive at that time, because the people were illiterate. And there weren't even any books that they could read, especially not when you were on the country. But the people on the countryside made the largest deal of the inhabitants. And, and, then and, we that's, and that's the danger. The, 
the danger for the lie is always to be exposed. Yeah. And that's why they fought so many of the farmers, because why would you otherwise, why, why would you fight the guy who plants the stuff that you eat? <laughs> yes. What's the sense of that? You want to hunger yourself? Plus, he, he, had, he was expressing his freedom of conscience, and he was self-sufficient. Yeah. See, in other words, another interesting rural study you can do is the is the Boer, Boer how do you pronounce that the Boer War the, the Boer Wars yes that is, that, is, that is because Boer that is the, the the Dutch word for farmer that's right the Boer Wars are nothing else than the farmers' wars yes and when you look in the Thirty Year War that you just mentioned between 1618 and 1648 in Germany uh, then you will also see that the most casualties were farmers. So the Boer War, that was, of course, from the settlers who left uh, the Netherlands or Holland or whatever you want to call that flat country over there and went to South Africa and installed there a new society. And those were um, what we today would call fundamentalists, like we are. Yes, yes. Vital fundamentalists. So on the one hand, the, the, the English Empire at that time had a foot in the door in South Africa because there were white people. On the other hand, they didn't have a foot in the door because these white people were uh, not of their congregation, <laughs> if you can call the Roman Catholic Church a congregation. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, But that was the start, of course, and afterwards um, they took over because they had colonies and uh, in Africa and via that they infiltrated and today South Africa is I think one of the most Catholic countries at least I have to believe that when I see the things and hear the things that people tell me when I have contact with someone from South Africa like some time ago with Andrew you know him still mm -hmm. I don't have contact with him anymore but the things that he told me and the movies that he to uh, showed me on, on YouTube to watch about what's really going on in South Africa that lets you shiver down your spine. Oh, yes, and the people that are listening, if you if you don't know, understand what's going on in South Africa, you can do some Google searches and and uh, and get boned. I mean, it's 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 a it's uh, it's it's really um, it's chaotic. I mean, they they they, they have security companies that uh, that have helicopters. You can hire a security companies is a big business, and uh, you know it's crime and you know and and but anyway, uh, uh, we, I'm, I'm hoping like yourself that we have somebody that stands up in the Congress, maybe a maybe a good American congressman. But what are the chances of that? Well, probably, probably slim chances, but um, because the hope dies at last, doesn't it, Walt? Yeah, you know. The hope dies at last. So, in the meantime, let's just see that we can educate more people about the Jesuit order and tell them about their history, which is not taught in schools anymore, at least not at this level. Yeah. And I'm going to continue reading now the last sentence on page 24. Then. This is the propaganda that Asna was challenging that anyone who opposes the totalitarian poverty and ignorance producing regimes of Latin America today must be a leftist. There are leftists, to be sure, who challenge Rome's 400-year reign of terror and extreme poverty. And the sad thing that should be noted but never is, is that there are few Americans who would not have challenged such regimes long, long ago. The poor peons ground into the dirt for centuries look to the U.S. to liberate them. And all they get in return is the backing of the rotten tyrannical dictatorships by the powerful U.S. government, a mere lackey of the Roman Catholic lobby in Washington. So they turn to whoever will help them in their struggle for some semblance of freedom. It is one of the great tragedies of our times that the only choice left to the people of Latin America in many cases is between Romanism on one side and Marxism on the other. And the Marxism even is the Jesuit brand. They are never given the choice 
by choosing neither Romanism nor Marxism, but Protestantism. Protestantism has become so weak and has been betrayed by so many lily-livered lily compromises that there is no viable choice left to many of the peoples of the world. Yet, when the world is examined, Protestant countries, with but a few exceptions, are the only ones where a semblance of freedom remains. Sister Anne Gormley, Associate Director of the U.S. Catholic Mission Association, in commenting on some of the allegations made against Sandinista government in Nicaragua, said, quote, I hear of no limitations to the work of the church in Nicaragua, end quote. She also said that it is good to have four churchmen in high government posts in Nicaragua. So although there are many uncertain sounds emanating from Nicaragua, the Vatican is deeply embroiled in the present government and no amount of double talk can dispel the fact that at least four sons of the church have the highest posts in the Sandinista, uh, Sandinista government. We certainly do not try to play down the fact that there are apparently deep rifts between some local priests and nuns who side with the poor and believe in liberation theology and the present Pope, who is opposed to them. But the bottom line is loyalty. If the leftist leaning clergy and political leaders promise to remain loyal to the Vatican in all their intrigues, then the Pope will overlook their Marxist ideology, even as former Pope overlooked the Nazi ideology of Hitler and his henchmen. Well, that makes a very good reference to what we were talking about earlier on this broadcast, right? Right, right. One modern writer commenting on the situation in Nicaragua said, quote, The major target of the U.S. is the Sandinista government of Nicaragua, which is now considered a Marxist regime. The truth of the matter is that there are more Jesuits and Jesuit-controlled individuals in the Sandinista government than there are individuals in the whole of Nicaragua who have gone beyond the first chapter of Marx's capital, end quote. The same writer went on to note that it is difficult to tell the difference between Andropov and the Jesuit, especially when the Jesuit is wearing a red Andropov t-shirt. Andropov was at the time um, the president of the USSR, right? Right, right. Uh, that was begin 80s as far as I remember, yeah, that was Andropov. In other words, the leftist regime is very definitely and very closely intertwined with Roman Catholicism in general and the Jesuits in particular. The guru of the Sandinista revolution is Ernesto Cardinal, a Trappist monk, the foreign minister of Escoto, a Merino priest, and the brains behind the whole operation, Fernando Cardinal, is a Jesuit. When these three Marxists, Roman Catholic clergymen joined forces with the strongman Daniel Ortego, who preaches uh, about a revolutionary being a Christian and vice versa. It is indeed difficult to escape the blanket of Jesuit casuistry, which seems to cover the revolution in Nicaragua. If we are to believe the new, society, uh, the new solidarity paper, which takes a definite Roman Catholic stance, there is not much hope for the liberation of Nicaragua from the hands of the Vatican Jesuit connection. For this paper states that the man in the U.S. is grooming to replace the Sandinistas, Eden Pastora, who is now building a base of operations in Honduras, is Jesuit-controlled himself. So that even the Sandinistas were removed tomorrow, another Jesuit-controlled man would be installed, this time with the help of the CIA, Catholics in Action, and the United States government. Where the Jesuits end and the Marxists begin is certainly a difficult question to answer, but one thing is certain as of this writing. The Jesuits are in control of Nicaragua. All the banks of Nicaragua were nationalized when the Sandinistas took over, except the Ambrosiano group. This group mysteriously escaped nationalization. The reason being, of course, that the Ambrosiano group is controlled by the Vatican. <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> of course, you don't have to nationalize something that already uh, you, that already you own, huh? Right. 
The Vatican has kept the people in Central America in ignorance and misery for four centuries. It is in the interest of the Vatican to keep its stranglehold, a stranglehold on these nations. They are doing so either by the, death of, uh, by the death squads in El Salvador or the Jesuit Marxists in Nicaragua, but they are maintaining their hold over the people. The U.S. as a Protestant country could bring some pressure to bear, which would really liberate the people from both warring fractions. But alas, no such pressure is ever brought to bear on the Vatican. Instead, the U.S. seems to become more and more the lackey of the Vatican and the power that keeps the rotten status quo place in Latin America. Well, I, you know, um, Ronald Cook wrote this in 1985, and if we were talking to Ronald Cook today in 2015, I, you know, it's, they're not a lackey anymore. If, you know, the United States is Rome. The Roman, the Roman Catholics run this country. In, in, look at your look at your civil. If you went to any city, they're either Freemasons or Catholics. It's 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 that's why I said at the beginning of the broadcast, the building has been burnt down. And uh, sometimes I feel like you're sitting here yelling fire, but it's already it's already, it's already burnt down. It's, you know. But, There's no fire left to warn the people from. <laughs> but, well, and the thing of it is, you can't deny what's about to happen with this uh, TPP treaty and the, and the climate uh, in yeah, the TPP, all this. The TPP you know. treaty is first and for all um, the death of healthy nutrition in Europe. Is, because with that, with that treaty, Monsanto gets an open door here. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely, and yeah. and, and uh, Boehner now is looking for votes. Uh, it, it wouldn't, uh, you know. I don't, it, they're still having trouble to pass it, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. You know, you it know. Wouldn't the, surprise me that they pass it before before. You know, the son, the son from Joseph oh, Biden, Hunter Biden, died a time ago. Yes. But did you know that he was working for Monsanto that they built up now in Ukraine? Did you know that? No. no. And probably our listeners don't know that either. But Hunter Biden is Jesuit trained, like his father. His father has, I think, at least two degrees. One is from Fordham. Another one is from... Uh, from Stratton. 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 Stratton, yeah. Stratton, yeah. Stratton, yeah. Stratton, yeah. And uh, probably not to Dame also, like uh, Obama has an, uh, an uh, honorary or whatever, uh, alumni from uh, Notre Dame. And so the son of Joseph Biden died some weeks ago, days ago, I don't know. I watched a video on that and that brought into me, because there of course was no, I think that was a video from RT, you know, Russia Today. And there of course was no mentioning of Hunter Biden working for Monsanto. And um, if you want to understand that, we have to go a little bit deeper into the Ukraine, which has also been a very interesting part in the World War II area. But the Ukraine is like uh, the wheat chamber of Europe. Yeah. It, always, it always was. Yeah. So when you got your fingers on the food chamber of Europe with your genetically modified organisms, then you have a very good um, step in, right? Right. So that's what they're doing in Ukraine, and that's what they're doing, of course, behind closed doors with the TPP agreement, which I call TPPI because I mostly watch German television on that uh, or German news on that, and I think they speak of TPPI, so I don't know where they put the eye in there, but it's, it's the same contract. It's this deal that the re European Union is dealing out with uh, America trade agreement and that would open all doors for Monsanto and all other practices that we are only aware of on America will come over here to uh, to Europe too and that will probably become the end of organic farming in the long run yes and or you can only farm what they sell you you know um, 
this is right on the door too. There, you know, like I said, this article I read this morning it was. And then you have to see. Then you have to see Monsanto in connection with the global warming hoax. Yes. Yes. I mean, in, in, in other words, because uh, Monsanto was was uh, was was founded by uh, Knight of Malta. Mm-hmm. And it's still run by a Knight of Malta. Yeah. I don't know who the, but uh, you know, it all, it all, it all, it all goes back to that word called Jesuits. See, that's mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what. Yeah, that's why I also mentioned it because uh, Joseph Biden's son was uh, Jesuit educated. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, we're it's it's in it's interesting times now. It's just it's it's. I mean, since the house is burnt down, I'm just you, we can just sit back and kind of watch this. And God's children, uh, you know, when you're reading the Bible and, under, and you understand uh, uh, revelations, you you you're not running around uh, trying to figure out what's going on. See, I mean, and that's in other words, the the reformers figured that out 500 years ago, except uh, that's been taken out of our swept out of our minds and out of the Bible colleges and. Yeah. In, in seminaries, and so they, so in other words, it, and it's simply, it all goes back. They they completely destroyed the protest. They took the protest out with futurism. Well, like our other broadcast was called, what? The Jesuits derooting the Reformation. And there were two great reformational countries on the earth on one moment at a time, and that was Germany and that was the United States of America, or the 13 colonies, on the other hand. Mm-hmm. So, as well as Germany, as is the United States of America, a root of Protestantism. Whether the protest is alive today or not, it is the root of Protestantism. And the Jesuits always go for revenge. And they went on revenge for Germany, and thanking them for Bismarck and the Second Reich throwing out the Jesuits and giving payback with World War I, the Treaty of Versailles, and leading up to World War II. And in the meantime, they got rid of a lot of Protestants. And, uh, did, you know, did you know that in, on, on D-Day in uh, 1944, when the Allies uh, ran all, on, on, uh, landed on the French coast, that these landing boats, these first landing boats they sent out, were all filled with Protestants. They were special chosen, and you know, they had this Omaha Beach, and I don't know, all these different names on there where they landed on, and there were special units from there and there, and they were selected. And they selected Protestant soldiers. It was a killing field. And it was a killing field. I mean, when you, when you just have a look, when you just want to let us get a slight idea of the horror that it must have been, if you can catch that horror on the screen, then you should watch uh, the movie Saving Private Ryan. In the beginning, there is a, a scene that plays for a few minutes on this landing beach site, and what you see there lets you shiver. And that's only what they do in a movie. That is not real war. That is not real blood. And those screams are not real because you are watching television or whatever to watch this but something else when you're in there and you live it i can tell you that well and one other thing you know like world war ii uh they physically with the world war ii was to to it was payback and to completely destroy the protest uh, the protest part of germany which was east germany which they made communist but what, what they di- what they've done in this country, and it's, it's just proof. I mean, uh, they they did it uh, academically. They took over all the universities and uh, took their history away. And uh, here we have uh, the biblical antichrist coming to speak to a joint session of Congress on in September, and there's not going to be even a peep. I don't see anybody saying anything. I mean. You know, you know, Tex Mars is not going to say anything. <laughs> I mean, Alex Jones is not going to say anything. You know, the Hagmans aren't going to say anything. Joe, Joe Hagman, he, 
he, he studied to be a priest. He's a, he's, he, he's a dropout. He just didn't make it, you know. And, uh, and But they'll talk about anything. That, but, boy, when it comes to, it's like I said, you know, it, it, when it comes to, it's, and they, they did it, they did it through futurism in this, in, this, in this country. Once they got a hold of the universities, once they got a hold of the seminaries and the Bible colleges, I mean... First, and for, all, first and for all, the ecumenical movement. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah, well, yeah but that's... But, that, that, was, that was an absolute target from the Vatican in the 60s against the United States of America. They knew they wouldn't have the time to build the Catholic Church as strong as it should be when they just go within their own terms. So they started the ecumenical movement to get control of all the Protestants. Well, and when you look today in America, in the, in the United States of America, to all the organized churches, how many of these churches, of these mega churches with millions of participants, we spoke about that on another broadcast too. Um, all these uh, these mega churches there. I, I, I lost my train of thought here. Um, they are 501c3. Gov government. They are by that, but when you are 501c3 organization, then you are a government agency. That's in but, the contract. Read that. It's online. You can look that up. But uh, the last chapter of this book that I put together, the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, the last chapter is written by a young man that I that I uh, corresponded with for a while. He wrote this. I think it's the best article I've come across, but the ecumenical movement, it, it's called The Christians in Babylonian Politics, America's Founding Fathers Blasphemy, blasphemy mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. But yeah. the ecumenical movement started in 1776. In other words, the, 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 that, that diffused, I mean, in other words, it was by law. They had just as many, they had, Rome, Rome had just as much, many rights to, 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 uh, to, uh, to practice their religion, you know, and they were less than 1%. You know they were less than one percent, but you know the the salt was here in this country. Yeah, the salt was there. The salt was here, and you know, and it was a, it's a big country. I've been back and forth across this, and you know, it's not it's not like uh, the United States is a lot different geographically. Uh, like I said, uh, the East Coast is is a it's a completely different culture. Even today, when I used to go back to Pennsylvania. And I'd pick up loads, and I'd, and I, you know, uh, and I, and I'd go, through, I'd go, through, you know, I took one load into New York. But in other words, it's a different culture. I mean, I, uh, uh, when the people moved west, you, you go. I, I've rode in a, an actual real life with real life cowboys in Nevada. Uh, people that live out on, uh, on, you know. 400 acres or what, and you know, in other words, they, they, they're they independent. They're very independent people, and it, there's a completely different culture. But now, uh, be, the West Coast, you know, where they started the revolution was, was in Los Angeles, was down in the Los Angeles area where they built Disneyland. And now, I live, I live in one of the most liberal states uh, in, the, in the Union. California, uh, Oregon, and Washington, you know, uh, is, is the most, and you see, liberalism, liberalism plays right into the Vatican's hands, because, uh, like, when the Pope comes over here and he speaks about global warming, uh, uh, these people, I mean, I, I, I know people, I mean, they, they will, I like, I've even asked questions, I like this Pope. I like what he says. That's that's, <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where we that's where we are 
Everybody liked also what Obama said. Uh, Obama said, change. Yeah, we want change. He, he didn't tell you what change you're going to get, but change you got. Yes, and uh, and it looks r- real. It, uh, it looks real. Uh, the way it's building up that we're going to we're going to get some more real change. Uh, I got an email here. I was trying to find it. Uh, 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 what what Hillary has said. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we are going to get a change. You know, and, and I, I hope I'm wrong when I say this. But you know, it's going to our next president's going to be Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush? I mean, <laughs> what's the difference? Well, but I know, but I already know who they want. I mean, in other words, there, there's only there's only going to be one. I mean, it doesn't matter which one they put in there. You understand? But we're going to get Hillary. Yeah, I, I think you know. I made an interesting comment on that video when I watched that about Hillary. It was something about um, New York, uh, where, where the Pope is going. Um, New York is also called the Big Apple, you know. And when I when I hear the Big Apple, then I always think of uh, in Paradise, Eve and the Apple story. Uh-huh. That's what I'm always thinking of. And uh, made the connection of when Hillary then is the president, and uh, she comes to uh, she comes to New York or whatever uh, in the Big Apple. That is like uh, the Antichrist is a woman. You know, mm-hmm. going to but, there and showing the Antichrist as a woman. Of course, but, a woman in the biblical sense is a church. Now, listen, I found this statement that Hillary said. Okay, this yeah. is in a speech presidential candidate. Hillary Clinton stated this when speaking on, on women in the world. She says, deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. <laughs> I mean, let, let, let me tell you that, 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 that she's not bashful, okay? And people are, and, and, and listen, listen, it, it's all rigged. The whole thing is rigged. Uh, but, 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 uh, but I know by mingling with people in, in our society and reading the comments where you really get an education is you read some of these, um, when you're reading the comments on some of these videos, you'll see just the mindset of, of what they've done to, to the minds. I mean, people, you see, God created individuals. There's only one York Lisbon and there's only Walt, one Walt Stickle. Every one of us are individuals. We've got a different blood type. I mean, not type, but DNA. And, and, we, and they've proven that we run on a frequency. And everyone's got a different frequency. Every single one of us is an individual. And individualism has been under attack for years. I mean, they had to take the individualism away from Americans because Americans had it. And in a lot of cultures, even to this day, still are individuals, but not in, not in Oregon. Not in Oregon, you know. Or California, they've, they've you know, in, in other words, they, they turned, they, they, uh, what, what individualism, is, Individualism versus um, what's the name? I just had it. Oh, I, I I lost it. Um, uh, collectionism. Co- collectivism. Collectivism. Yeah. Yes, sorry, yes. I really yes, have, yes, I really yes. have to search in my in my brain that's, for that. That, that. That's what they promote. In other words, they want us to think it's a group. See. See, and God's children don't think it's a group. It's individualism against collectivism. Collectivism is communism, socialism. Yes. Whether you have it from the right side or you have it from the left side, it's something that I always try to put in the minds of our listeners. Again, the National German Social Workers Party was socialist. It was national. By that, it was from the so-called right political wing, but it was still socialist. And whether you are a national socialist, or you are a universal socialist, uh, what you all have in common is that you are a socialist, right? 
and socialists always have the same goal and old socialism leads eventually to communism which no. is nothing else than a totally controlled society which we are absolutely going for I mean everybody can see that oh, yes. and that takes away the individualism but okay you of course told well individualism you have that because you have the biometrics now when you can start your iPhone with and all this this is all personalized it's all individually solved you know they tell you there are individual solutions in this, but it's a collectivist agenda behind that. No? Yes. And, and, and you know, it can't be said enough of what they've done with mind control. I mean, and see, when you turn everything off and you open the Bible, you will acquire, if you turn everything off and you start reading the Bible, you will acquire a sound mind. The best is go somewhere where it's quiet, go somewhere in, in the in woods other words, or, won't outside, be jumping to or outside and, and sit there and read your Bible. That's the best thing you can have. No distraction from cell phone, television, radio, whatever. Just go outside and, and, and sit outside somewhere where it's peaceful and, and read the Bible. And this will be a whole other experience than just sitting in your home and doing it. And you know, where you find out where the world's at and you'll find out how much the new age, you know, this this uh, is, is ask somebody the question, what is sin? You will get their religion. They can see what that they, we're living in an atheistic society. They've taken their faith away with evolution. So, you know, uh, uh, there is no right and wrong. And and uh, but but uh, Hillary is going to is going to change that with a deep seated culture codes religious beliefs and a structural bias have to be changed. She you know that's what that's what they're doing. When I see the school bus go by here in the mornings, it gives me chills. It gives me chills because I mean they're they're not they're not learning. Of course, I'm not. look look at me. I'm a I'm a baby boomer. Did I learn anything? Did they teach me any history? I learned about World War II through the movies. You know, I used to, when I was growing up, 10, 12 years, I used to play war. Can you imagine? It's embarrassing to say that, but they, 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 listen, anybody in my age group. Hey, I the, played cowboys and Indians when I was growing up. <laughs> because you've seen it on the TV. <laughs> you see, and, and they, even, they, they even got uh, uh, Western bars over in Germany. Yeah, like they have Hope Playhouse also in America. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you know, another, they, uh, they, they they molded, uh, you know, it was like this. I heard this from Stuart Crane. This is a man I, I just, when I was out of the truck, I used to, he, I had several of his lectures. And he, he would say it like this. He'd say, doesn't matter whether you're in Florida California, Washington, or wherever you're at, they're playing this. You go to they they got high schools. They got a high school, and they got a they got a McDonald's. I mean, you, you take your eye. In other words, they could blindfold you. And and I seen it when I was in, driving back and forth across the United States. See, at one time prior prior to the fifties, uh, there was a big difference between what's going the, down. What's to the time world? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah, we only got a, a, about 36. But there, at one time, there used to be a big difference. There used to be a big difference in, in different parts of our country. There was a big marked difference, but there isn't any more. There isn't any more. All no, on. no. You know, I mean, uh, you know, but I know one thing. I was always glad to go west. West when I was in the truck. So anyway, listen, we're coming down to 10 seconds. You want to say goodbye? Yes, I'd like to say goodbye. Thank you for all the listeners and people uh, later on who will watch the video to follow the broadcast Hour of the Truth. I thank you very much for your attention. Wish you all a very good day and night and hope to see you next week. And until then, God bless you and bye-bye.